Hello everybody. I am Stefanie Sembel from the University Hospital in Erlangen in Germany and um, I am study physician of the German worldwide CML PET2 registry and uh, I will give a talk on treatment recommendations in pediatric CML blast phase. So CML blast phase can either occur as an initial presentation um, of um, CML, we then speak from the novel CML blast phase, or as a progression from um, chronic um, phase or accelerated phase, um, we then speak from um, secondary CML blast phase. And after the introduction of tyrosine kinase inhibitors, TKIs, the annual rate of progression from um, CML chronic phase to accelerated phases or blast phases dramatically decreased from more than 20% to 1 to 1.5% in adult patients. And you can see this here um, from the data um, of the German CML studies in ad adult patients. But um, the other side of the coin is that the prognosis of CML blast phase remains poor in adult patients with median overall survival um, of less than 12 months. And the response to the TKI therapy is usually temporary. So um, how does the pediatric data look like um, in the era of TKI therapy? So as pediatric oncologists know, CML is a very rare disease with an annual incidence of 1 to 2.2 cases per million. And the frequency of advanced phases among these patients was described um, with 4 to 11 percent in recent studies. And due to this um, rarity, um, there's a lack of specific clinical trials um, and there's minimal evidence on um, the management of CML blast phase in children and adolescents. So um, here you can see um, a summary um, of the published um, of the published systematic cohort-based studies. Um, there are two studies um, of the international registry and one from our German registry. Here you can see the study period. Um, and um, in the international registry, the novel and secondary blast phases uh, were studied separately. And we in the German registry, we did a comparison between the novel um, CML blast phases and secondary CML blast phases. And um, you see the incidence of the novel CML blast phase is 3.5% uh, um, in the study of the international registry and 5.9% um, in our study. And the incidence of secondary blast phases was 7% um, in the international registry and 47 in our German analysis. And overall survival rates ranged from 44% um, to 74%. And in the next few slides, I want um, to briefly present um, some aspects of our German um, um, study. So um, what is consistent among the pediatric patients and um, what uh, we also clearly confirmed um, is the clear dominance um, of the lymphoid immune phenotype in pediatric CML blast phase. And this is in contrast to the adult data. But this uh, leukemic feature um, also leads to uncertainty in distinguishing between the novo CML blast phase with lymphoid immune phenotype and Philadelphia positive ALL. Our analysis um, also included the almost complete data set um, regarding um, BCR able one um, tyrosine kinase domain mutations. And um, we evaluated that in both subgroups, so the novo and secondary CML blast phase, um, there, um, that over two thirds of pediatric patients harbored one or two um, resistant mediating mutations at diagnosis of CML blast phase. And this is um, very important when we come to our treatment decisions. So um, treatment of pediatric patients in CML blast phase and our analysis um, in the majority of cases consistent um, of a phenotype adapted um, induction chemotherapy in combination with a TKI, but we evaluated a great heterogeneity um, regarding the um, intensity of the administered um, induction therapy. So ranging for the patients with lymphoid immune phenotype from the four, uh, full four drug ALL induction to um, reduced uh, induction um, concepts, for example, um, with a combination of vincristine and steroids only. 
And 78% of our patients proceeded to HSCT at the time point of our diagnosis. And 50% um, of the patients who proceeded to HSCT reached major molecular response. And um, the median time to HSCT um, was four months um, for the patients with secondary blast phase and um, seven months for the patients um, with the Novocemal blast phase. And regarding our outcome data, we evaluated a high um, relapse rate um, before HSCT um, could be performed and um, the probability of relapses before HSCT um, was significantly higher in the de novo um, um, subgroup, um, but there was no um, difference in overall survival. And um, this is in contrast to the data of the International Registry, where um, secondary blast phases had a significantly uh, worse outcome compared with the novo blast phases with overall survival um, rates from um, 44%. Um, and here it is worth mentioning um, that uh, we in our study um, evaluated a particular sh short time to HSCT for the secondary CML blast phase subgroup with four months. And um, the, the time median time to HSCT in the international study was um, 20 months, just to compare that. Um, and um, this data may approach an early HSCT approach, um, may support an early HSCT approach um, for pediatric patients in CML blast phase. And relapses after HSCT mainly occurred um, within um, the first two years. So um, yeah, um, a very strict monitoring um, should be performed um, during this time period. So after these um, evaluations, um, we aimed to develop practical cl um, clinical treatment um, recommendations. Um, for pediatric patients with um, CML blast phase. And um, we formed um, the um, International Pediatric um, CML Walking Party. And um, the recommendations I would like to present um, are based um, on a discussion between um, these 22 um, international experts, so experts on the field um, of um, pediatric um, CML, and hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And um, we formulated main topics, as you can see here, and key questions. And um, the, aim, uh, the aim was um, to confirm a consensus um, on the main topics. And um, if um, a consensus was not achieved, it is mentioned in our publication. And um, because our recommendations were recently um, accepted from the journal um, Leukemia for publication. So the first step um, is the diagnosis. And um, we provided therefore um, a table with recommendations um, on an extended um, diagnostic workup in patients who um, um, meet the criteria for CML blast phase. So the first steps um, are clear and they do not differ from chronic phases. So of course you do physical examination a complete blood count and a bone marrow um, examination, including um, cytogenetic examination. And um, as you all know, um, blast phase is defined um, by the number or the percentage of blast in, in blood count or bone marrow. And um, as you may also know, the definitions um, of CML blast phase um, are not consistent um, within the um, international committees. Um, regarding the blast threshold. So the um, European Leukemia Net, ELN, sets the threshold at 30% and uh, the WHO at 20%. And most um, pediatric guidelines, um, which are published um, to date, um, and um, the studies um, refer to the ELN criteria. And um, there is a study in adult patients um, that patients with more than 30% plus um, have a significant worse outcome compared with patients um, who had blast count between 20 and 29%. But there's no um, specific um, data for pediatric patients. And as you all know, this is a, a continuum. So um, yeah, it's, it's okay 
um, to define blast phase by your institutional and national standards. Um, it should um, be noted um, that um, the detection of lymphoblasts even below 10% um, is generally um, considered compatible with the diagnosis um, of CML blast phase in the um, current um, WHO classification. So um, patients um, with a relevant number of lymphoblasts, um, it, is also, um, it, is also, it justifies also an extended diagnostic workup in these patients. So you characterize um, your blast population by flow cytometry. That's the next step. And then we come to a very important step. It's um, molecular genetics. So it's clear to define the BCI-ABLE one fusion transcript and um, the BCI-ABLE transcript level by real-time PCR. And it is strongly recommended to perform a tyrosine kinase domain mutation analysis. And um, next generation sequencing um, is here preferred over Sanger sequencing, if available, um, because it has a higher sensitivity. And the next point here, performing a myeloid or um, a lymphoid panel, um, yeah, it does not yet influence treatment decision, but if available, it should be considered to gain um, further information on pediatric CML blast phase in the future. So um, the examination of cerebrospinal fluid um, should be performed to define um, CNS status and uh, intrafecal um, prophylaxis should be administered. And last but not least, uh, HLA typing and the donor search um, should be initiated. So um, to discriminate Philadelphia positive ALL from CML blast phase lymphoid phenotype there are some features um, that could be indicated for CML blast phase at diagnosis. For example, um, a high leukocyte count. And um, if um, the blast infiltration isn't um, too high, um, it's also possible to see um, a left shifted myeloid maturation or an increased basophil or eosinophil count at diagnosis. And another indicative um, feature is the presence of a major transcript type. But none of these features is evidential for the diagnosis. And then there are some features um, which may um, em emerge during the therapy. They are summarized in this table here. So um, you cannot discriminate from morphology of low cytometry, but um, the um, cytogenetic of fish positivity at the end of the induction therapy um, is an indicator for CML blast phase. And there is another um, method, so the detection of the BCR-ABLE fusion um, via interface fish on neutrophils, um, which could be performed after major blast, re blast reduction. And if this method um, succeeds, so if um, you can um, detect BCR-ABLE fusion on um, neutrophils, um, it confirms the diagnosis of CML blast phase. But however, this method has um, several limitations. Um, first of all, the availability. And um, yeah, a second limitation could be that the um, remission is um, already too deep um, to detect BCR able, the BCR able fusion um, by fish. And um, the next point is the comparison um, um, of um, clonal disease markers um, with the BCR able transcript level. So a divergent um, reduction of clonal disease markers evaluated by um, immune globulin heavy chain or T cell receptor rearrangements or flow cytometry in comparison with the BCR able transcript level um, at the end of induction therapy could be a, a, an indicator for CML blast phase. So it is also important um, to re-evaluate your um, diagnosis um, during the therapy. So now we come to our treatment recommendation. So the first step is the selection of the TKI therapy, which uh, mainly depends on the um, blast phase type. So is it a de novo or a secondary blast phase and on the presence um, of a BCR-ABLE um, kinase domain mutation. So for the novo CML blast phase, the panel decided to um, recommend the frontline use of a second um, generation TKI 
and the rationale is um, the faster achievement um, of uh, molecular remission. And um, this is a basis for an early HSCT approach. And if a resistant mediating mutation is present, you should adapt your TKI therapy according to the bci able one mutation profile. And in case of inadequate response um, after induction, um, you, um, um, it's recommended to consider switching to ponatinib. In case of secondary CML plus phase, um, the selection of the TKI therapy um, depends on the pretreatment. So if the pretreatment was with imatinib, um, it is recommended to switch to a second generation TKI. And if the pretreated was already with a second generation TKI, it is um, recommended to switch to ponatinib. And again, if a resistant mediating mutation is present, um, you should um, adapt your TKI therapy accordingly. So ca caution must be taken um, because of the overlapping um, toxicities of ponatinib with intensive chemotherapy, especially asparaginase, which is used um, for the induction of um, lymphoid CML blast phase. Um, these are only very um, rare cases, um, but um, the overlapping toxicity, hepatotoxicity, pancreatitis um, um, is um, very um, very important and um, in, in adult um, um, recommendations, um, um, it is recommended to avoid this um, combination. So now we come to the induction treatment for um, CML blast phase lymphoid phenotype. So our current recommendation include the implementation of um, ALL induction chemotherapy according to national and institutional standards. And, and the TKI treatment should be started immediately after the confirmation um, of the bcr able one um, fusion. And this is in contrast to the approach in Philadelphia positive ALL, where the TKI treatment is started um, on day 15. Um, we decided to go with this approach um, because the toxicity um, of combining um, TKI with induction chemotherapy um, is studied in several studies, and um, um, there's a there's a good um, toxicity profile with combining TKI with the induction chemotherapy. Um, so, just in case you have a secondary CML blast phase where you where you already know the BCR able fusion um, is present. Um, Perhaps the secondary CML blast phase developed under imatinib pretreatment switched to a second generation TKI and um, um, administer the chemotherapy in parallel. So this would be a possible scenario for this um, approach. So no complete consensus could be reached um, for the recommended intensity um, of induction therapy. There were different positions taken by the national study groups, um, range from um, complete induction therapy um, as used in ALL um, to um, reduced induction um, with only a part of the multi-agent regimen, for example, without anthracyclines, and um, then intensify the, uh, the therapy depending on the response. So um, our um, preliminary um, um, decision was um, that the decision on the um, on the intensity of the induction um, has to be made um, based on your national and um, on your institutional experiences. And as we all know, in everyday clinical practice, the approach depends um, on several factors, not only um, on the response to the therapy, as well as, for example, um, if there is a suitable stem cell donor available um, within an uh, acceptable time frame. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an individual decision um, anyway in some cases. So a prophylactic um, intrafecal therapy is mandatory and um, it should be administered according to protocols, um, instruction and um, monthly aspiration to transplantation. So for the induction um, treatment of myeloid immune phenotype, um, the first course of AML induction um, therapy according to the national institutional standards is recommended um, to induce a hematologic remission. And the TKI um, therapy in this case should be started at the end of 
chemotherapy induction, um, but not in parallel to avoid um, interactions and toxicities with the um, AML induction um, regimen. And intrafecal prophylaxis should be included according to national protocols. And whether a second cycle of chemotherapy should be added depends on remission status and the availability of a suitable donor. So after um, induction, um, we recommend to perform an allogenic HSCT because um, based on our current knowledge and the current data, it is the only curative um, treatment option. But the timing of um, allogenic um, HSCT is um, critical um, because response to the TKI therapy is usually short-lived and um, mechanisms independent from BCRA will often drive progression. And on the other hand, um, a transplantation in um, active disease um, has a worse outcome. So active blast phase um, is the strongest factor associated with um, a worse outcome um, after transplantation, which was evaluated by several studies and which was also um, evaluated in this study from the EBMT Chronic Malignancy Working Party in 2019. Um, and um, here um, a multivariable analysis was performed and transplantation in active CML blast phase was strongest factor associated with decreased overall survival. The hazard ratio was 1.87. And on the other hand, um, the outcome of um, the um, HSCT um, also um, depends on the status of the remission. So in this study in adult patients from um, Gen et al, the five-year overall survival directly correlates with the depth um, of a molecular response. So five-year overall survival in complete cytogenetic remission was 12%, major molecular remission um, 34%. 4% um, and in undetectable leukemia, 72%. So um, our recommendation is therefore based um, on the data um, that um, um, we saw from adults and um, on the limited experiences in pediatric patients. And the ideal timing for allogenic um, HSCT depends on three factors. So blast reduction, reduction um, in the bcia able transcript levels, and the availability of a suitable stem cell donor. And data in pediatric patients demonstrated a high relapse rate of 15 to 27% after a median of 8.5 months before HSCT could be performed, which supports an early allogenic um, HSCT um, approach. And um, um, we um, you can see in this flow chart here, I only go through the ideal um, scenario. So after induction chemotherapy, you um, have a response evaluation um, the patient reached a second chronic phase, a donor is available, um, and then HSCT um, should be performed ideally um, within three months. For the selection of the conditioning regimen, our um, general recommendation is um, to, um, to select the myeloablative conditioning regimen. And most um, pediatric patients in the pre-TKI era um, had the conditioning regimen, um, which was buzofan based or um, TBI based. And um, there was um, no difference um, regarding the survival um, data when comparing this conditioning regimens. Um, but this was no specific um, data for um, CML blast phase patients. So um, based um, on the beneficial um, data from the prospective um, forum trial in pediatric ALL, um, the panel decided to recommend a TBI-based myeloablative conditioning regimen for patients with CML blast phase lymphoid phenotype. And for patients with CML blast phase myeloid um, phenotype, um, a non-TBI um, myeloablative conditioning regimen um, based on national and institutional treatment protocols um, is recommended. 
And um, after HSCT uh, close, um, a monitoring um, of the BCR able transcript levels um, should be performed. So um, in the first year, we recommend the monthly BCR able one transcript monitoring. And in terms of um, post transplant TKI um, therapy, um, we um, we decided, or the consensus of the panel was um, to to recommend a preemptive um, approach, not a prophylactic one. So the reasons for preferring preferring this approach um, um, are reviewed in detail in the publication. So it's um, it's mainly because of toxicities um, combining um, TKIs um, with immunosuppression um, and also on the lack of prospective um, trials in pediatric patients. And the molecular criteria for um, the restart of, um, of the TKI therapy um, are either loss of major molecular response, uh, major molecular remission uh, in a single sample, um, or detectable BCR able one transcripts at lower levels in two consecutive um, samples taken at least um, two, but not more than uh, four weeks apart. So at the end, um, I don't want to forget to mention also immune, immunotherapeutic um, options, interventions, um, which currently advancing to the first line treatment in um, patients um, with pediatric um, ALL. And um, they, these are potential therapeutic interventions for patients with CML blast phase B lymphoid phenotype. Um, and um, potential um, interventions are plinatumumab, inotuzumab, osogamycin, or CD19 directed chimeric ant antigen receptor T cells. So, um, in adult patients with a Philadelphia positive ALL, um, a combination of dazatinib with glucosteroids and um, two cycles of plinatumumab was investigated and um, it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2020. So 63 patients were treated uh, with this combination and after two cycles of plinatumumab, 60% showed a molecular response defined as complete molecular response or positive non-quantifiable response. And the overall survival was um, 95% after a median follow-up of 18 months. To date, um, there are only a um, few patients in CML blast phase um, um, treated with um, plinatumumab and um, with only a short follow-up time, um, but it is available um, alternative to chemotherapy and it may change the uh, treatment recommendations in the upcoming years. And it also should, uh, also should be considered um, in patients with um, failure to the induction therapy or um, suboptimal response to the induction um, therapy um, regarding the blast population, um, immunotherapeutic um, options should also be considered. So to sum up, um, due to the small case numbers, consistent data on pediatric patients with CML blast phase are rare. And um, previous studies evaluated heterogeneous um, therapeutic strategies. And patients benefit from a rapid and complete diagnostic workup as a um, crucial point for future therapeutic decisions. And, and the current recommendations represent an expert consensus based on the current state of knowledge. And ideally, pediatric patients with CML blast phase should be treated in joint international studies um, in the future. So um, I would like to say thank you. And if you have um, any questions or comments, you can reach the CML PET team. You can see our email address here. Uh, so um, thank you very much.